Hello, friends. This is Jim here with Science Talk. And I want to talk to you about something that uh, would not come as a surprise to any of you who are paying attention. And I know those who watch this channel are paying attention. So in a paper that was uh, just published in the journal Frontiers in Conservation Science, uh, 17 scientists basically state that humankind faces what they call, in their words, and I quote, a ghastly future, a threat to the Earth's living things. Is so great that it is difficult to grasp for even well informed experts. That's their words. So, what's, uh, what's going on that led them to this assessment? Well, they point out the destruction and loss of world's plants and animals, destruction of ecosystems, destruction of plants, uh, you know, or uh, forests, excuse me which is occurring on an unprecedented scale. They also point out to the overwhelming growth of the human population and the demand such growth places on world's resources. You've heard me discuss this uh, be before. There's just too many people on the planet. We are well above the carrying capacity and something is bound to snap and it will snap soon. They also point out climate disruption, you know, driven by uh, humans' uh, environmental damage that we're doing, as well as the, you know, warming the planet itself. And so they say that, you know, they're now putting the onus on scientists to be more candid, speaking out more forcibly about what's going on and becoming more engaging, was engage more so with government, business, and the public. And we're starting to see that, especially with the, uh, and I don't want to date myself here, with some of the younger uh, scientists uh, uh, coming up. Um, if there was a, a criticism I have of, of people, colleagues of my age group, is that we, we just did our science, did our publications, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> and people need to know what's going on, and we're seeing more and more of that. Uh, now that I'm basically retired from uh, field research, this is why I'm doing this channel. I want to uh, inform people what the hell is going on. And that's why I do my deep dive videos where I explain some of the more intricate uh, concepts as it pertains to, you know, the natural world, what's going on. And so these uh, scientists, and they came from uh, Australia, the U.S., and Mexico, they're saying that they want to draw attention to the apparent lack of appreciation of the enormous challenges that humans are facing, especially if we wish to create and continue a sustainable future. They warn that a million species could soon disappear from the face of the earth. Well, that's a million that we know of. How many species do we not know of that have never been described uh, by science that are going extinct? I would actually say that a million species is most likely an underestimation. Now, they refer to as the ongoing sixth mass extinction. Well, there's some evidence. Uh, and if you look at, for example, Guy McPherson, he uh, puts out some information that the evidence for a seven and possibly uh, an eighth mass extinction. In other words, that there's one or two other mass extinctions that are just now being identified. So this would make this the seventh or eighth mass extinction. Whatever the number of mass extinction this is, there is an ongoing mass extinction, and this is being caused by human activity. Because the planetary burden of humans have doubled in just 50 years, this is from their paper, and could reach 10 billion by 2050, 
the world faces a future of hunger, malnutrition, mass unemployment, refugee crisis, climate refugee crisis as well, and ever more devastating pandemics. You have heard me talk about this before, where I basically state, as for example, when as the permafrost continues to thaw out, we do not know what pathogens will be unleashed, and that will cause pandemics. 10 billion people by 2050. You know, and some of the, you know, I did that video about it, too many people on the planet. You know, some of the projections are 13 billion by 2100. There's just no way in hell uh, that this is sustainable. 8 billion is not sustainable. You add another 2 billion in another 30 years? No. Something is going to snap. As I said here, if you, you're going to have starvation, you're going to have a water shortage. You don't have water, you die, you know, and, and so forth. So expect to see, for those of you who are younger and unfortunately going to be living through this, I'll be long dead by 2050. But for you know, those of you um, who are living through this, it's, you're going to probably be living through a, some very troubling times with a mass reduction in human population numbers. Human trigger climate change will mean more fires, more frequent, intense flooding, uh, more intense storms. All right, we're already seeing all of these, right? Poorer water, air quality, and human health overall declining, becoming worse. And we're, it's already here. It's already happening, people. We're seeing this. Just in the last two years alone, things have ratcheted up uh, immensely. So this uh, study that they put out was actually based, they looked, they did a, uh, a literature review and they looked at at least 150 uh, prior scientific studies, many of them dealing with the, uh, the loss of biodiversity brought on by what the humans are doing because humans have brought changes to 70% of the planet's land surface. With this loss goes the Earth's ability to support complex life. So Corey Bradshaw of Flinders University, based in Australia, who is the lead author, states that the mainstream is having difficulty grasping the magnitude of this loss, referring to biodiversity, despite the steady erosion of the fabric of human civilization. The problem is compounded by ignorance and short-term self-interest with the pursuit of wealth and political interests stymieing the action that is crucial for survival. Most of the world's economies, the authors argue, are predicated on the political belief that meaningful counteraction would be too costly to be politically palatable. So in other words, that's like saying, yeah, we know we should do this, but we really don't feel like it because it could get us into political trouble. We won't make as much money. So, but we're okay with just letting shitload of people die. Basically with the same. The authors continue, combined with financed disinformation campaigns. Global warming is a hoax. The science isn't settled. Yada, 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 which we all know is bullshit. The science is settled. So these financed disinformation campaigns are a bid to protect short-term profits. It is doubtful that any needed shift in economic investments of sufficient scale will be made in time. In other words, what they're saying is capitalism is a major problem as well. And they are correct. Now, in this paper, it's simply collating 50 plus uh, prior studies. So they didn't necessarily provide quote unquote new information. They're simply trying to put everything into a perspective in, you know, summarize the findings, summarize what's been going on. So it's uh, kind of contained all in one. Two fifths of the world's plant species are endangered. This is a startling couple of next 
statistics I'm going to share with you. The collective mass of wild mammals worldwide has fallen by 25%. That's one quarter. 68% of vertebrate species have declined. Much of this in the last century or so. Here's one, and I just did a video on this. Humans and their domestic animals now add up to 95% of the mass of all vertebrates. Let me repeat that. This is a stark telling statistics. Humans and their domestic animals. That's livestock, your, your pet dog, your, your kitten that's running around on, you know, on the windowsill. Right? 95% of the mass of all ver vertebrates. So wild mammals, wild birds, reptiles, amphibians are comprise the other 5% of vertebrates. I saw that and I was just like, uh, holy shit. And the structures that humans have, have built, roads, buildings, etc., now outweigh the animals and plants on Earth. I just did a video on that. Think about that. We've turned a planet into a concrete asphalt jungle. So with the loss of wilderness comes the loss of what researchers call natural capital and ecosystem services. Reduced pollination of crops, degradation of soil, poor air and water supplies, etc. From 1960, kind of do like a little historical perspective here. 1960, 61 years ago, humans had already requisitioned around 73% of the planet's regenerative capacity. In other words, what humans demanded was still within the limits of the sustainable, barely. In 2016, this demand has grown to an unsustainable 170%. In other words, we're stripping the resources more than, than they can be replenished. Today, around 700 to 800 million people are starving, and between 1 and 2 billion are now nourished. If you take the 2 billion mark, that's 25% of people are now nourished. Population growth sparks both internal international conflict and is in turn exacerbated by climate change, driven as by the ever increasing global average temperatures. In other words, we are creating a pile of climate refugees. The potential count of what these researchers call environmental refugees people driven from their homes by drought, poverty, civil war, flooding, heat extremes, climate change uh, ramifications, has been set between 25 million and 1 billion by 2050. And we're already seeing, you know, something like 4 or 5 million people today, if not a bit more. It would not surprise me if these numbers turn out to be an underestimation. The scientists also warn of political impotence. What are the nations? What are the national leaders doing to address any of these issues? Obviously, they're ineffective. And basically, they, they actually developed this phrase called the ecological Ponzi scheme, in which society robs nature and future generations to pay for boosting incomes in the short term. Or the poke at capitalism. So, as I've said many times, scientists do what we do our studies, we do our analyses, we present our findings, we present our recommendations. It's up to the political leaders to implement those recommendations. Now, what they're basically saying is that now, in addition to just the scientists simply making a recommendation, the scientists need to uh, basically, for lack of a better word, badger uh, the politicians to implement the uh, recommended policies. Simple as that. If we have a shot at surviving. But keep in mind, there are some uh, 
environmental scientists, ecologists who opine that an increase of four degrees C will be sufficient to cause human extinction. Now, if we look at the, you know, some of the papers I've uh, shared with you recently, that the projection is a five to seven to nine or even 11 C increase by 2100, along with all, uh, 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 research done out of a, from an Australian think tank saying that human civilization will end by 2050, it's not looking good that humans will survive this century. It really is not. And, you know, and if humans do survive, the numbers are going to be extremely reduced from current levels. I think James Lovelock recently stated that he expects pandemics alone could wipe out 6 billion people. Well, that's 75% of current levels. As I said, this is not sustainable. Some corrective measures will take place. And you're probably starting to see some signs of that. So, ghastly future, extremely very bad future, troubling future awaits us all. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.